our systematic effort to dismantle terrorist organizations must continue. But this war, like all wars, must end. That's what history advises. That's what our democracy demands. Welcome back to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. That was President Obama last week setting out his foreign policy goals, his vision of America's role in the world. Are his goals something that we actually want him to achieve? What does it mean for our country? Global View columnist Brett Stevens is here. Brett, you've criticized the president before, said he didn't have any sort of strategy abroad. Now you say that he does. What is it? Well, it's what I call the retreat doctrine. And in his mind, it's the view that if America retreats from some of its longstanding global commitment, uh, commitments, um, its security arrangements, wars we have been fighting or wars we're choosing very conspicuously not to fight, as in Syria, that we can somehow renew this country. Now, I think that's a very serious mistake. I think that's precisely the same mistake that American leaders, Republicans, as well as Democrats, made in the 1920s and 1930s, thinking that we could simply wish the world away. By the way, you just heard that clip from President Obama. Of course it's true. It's a truism. It's a cliche that wars must end. But I don't remember Dwight Eisenhower or Jack Kennedy in the middle of the Cold War saying, you know, wars have got to end, <laughs> and so I'm just going to declare that, it, that, that it's over. That this the, one is over. Yeah, wars have two sides. Right. Um, well, Brett, let's talk about one of these examples and how it's playing out in Syria. Uh, the president has, has, has said a lot about Assad must go, but he's done very little. Uh, what's the result of that policy for us? Well, you see, the, the, the president's view was that if we stayed out of Syria, we would be essentially containing the problem to Syria. What the result of staying out, of, of having really anything to do with the conflict, in addition to uh, coming on 100,000 people dead, a million refugees, is you have the Kingdom of Jordan, moderate Arab regime, uh, teetering on the brink, um, uh, Lebanon now coming under sectarian fire, Hezbollah, Lebanese Hezbollah involving itself in a big way, chemical weapons reportedly being used uh, more and more widely, the Israelis on a knife's edge, the Russians taking advantage of our weakness and indecision to uh, send advanced anti-aircraft missiles into Syria. Our problems, in effect, have multiplied by not doing anything. They haven't been contained. They're getting worse. And I think we're going to see the spread of it. Above all, we're allowing Iran to gain a strategic position and, uh, and an advantage uh, in the Middle East, which should be the last thing that we'd want given their nuclear posture. Uh, Brett, it seems, though, that the president is pushing on an open door here when it comes, for example, to the Republicans who, aside from Lindsey Graham, John McCain, the Kelly Ayotts, Marco Rubio's of the world, yeah. isn't saying very much about the situation in Syria or this broader foreign policy that you, you're describing. Well, I think th there's always been an isolationist tendency on both sides of the American political aisle, and now we're seeing it among Republicans, too, because, you know, the easiest way to spook a Republican is say, oh, Syria, that's just going to be another uh, Iraq, as if every single intervention by the United States, however limited, has got to be a major war and it's going to end up uh, in a total fiasco. You know, the Republican Party under people like Robert Taft um, had a not so uh, glorious history in the 1920s and 1930s, all the way up until the summer of 1939, essentially poo-pooing foreign threats and saying, well, we've got to We've got to bring things home. Republican isolationists want to want to end our foreign commitments for smaller government. Democratic isolationists want to do it for bigger government. Either way, it's a simple fact. You can't wish the rest of the world away. And it's dangerous for America. It's dangerous for our allies to imagine that we can. You can't wish the rest of the world away. Global View columnist Brett Stevens, thanks so much for being on the show.